Hello. Uh, so definitely it's six o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for being here today uh, and then stopping in and sharing this time with me. Can everyone hear me well? Uh, drop something in the chat just to let me know that you can hear me fine. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, so super excited. Like I said, this is a new segment that I will be doing every Friday, weekly, uh, going over different topics. This week's topic is state and local government contracting, I'm calling it Free Game Friday. Uh, and it'll be an hour long segment where we just share uh, information about how to navigate the government contracting process, uh, especially from multiple different levels, which can be very complicated. Uh, the process within itself can be very complicated. So this time around, we'll just go through what is government, well, not necessarily what is government contracting, more about how to do business with state and local government agencies. So just previous background into me just a little bit in the company. GovLA is a software company. Uh, we also provide different trainings and help, gov help government agencies and small businesses. Uh, we help businesses narrow down the process and figure out how to navigate and do business with government agencies. But for a government agency, we work with them to simplify their processes with our software platform to make it easier to get more businesses involved in the process, uh, especially women-owned, veteran-owned, and minority-owned companies, because, of course, there are disparity studies that come out and show time and time again that we are not accessing these contracting opportunities. Uh, and often left out. So it, it will help us to get into this space so that way we can build some more economic opportunity for not only ourselves, our families, but as well as the communities overall. Uh, it's also known that as a business grows, they continue to hire, hire people within their community. Uh, so there we are, we're creating jobs uh, and providing other people with the inspiration and knowledge and take everything you get from this, everything you learn, pass it on uh, and share it with people. Uh, knowledge is nothing if it's not shared. So on to this next, on the, this topic. So state and local government agencies. You will always see people pushing the government contracting um, conversation, but it's always targeted around doing business with the federal government. And I get it. The process is simple. Um, many people have had success with it. It's it's a lot simpler than doing a business with government from, from my perspective, from doing business with state and local governments from my perspective. Um, and it's kind of more one of a centralized process, uh, so to speak. But at the state and local government levels, the process is decentralized because these are a number of different governing bodies and everyone has a different way of doing things. So for example, I am here in Broward County and there are 31 cities in Broward County and every city has a completely different process. In addition to the county having a, their own procurement process as well. And then of course, anchor institutions are, are outside institutions that have their own funding and processes such as the sheriff's office or some quasi government um, entities such as the hospitals, uh, the local schools, universities, they all have different processes in place uh, for their contracting. So this gives us the opportunity to do business in our local area at scale, like literally magnitude. You can do business with you know, multiple, get, get multiple contracts right in your own backyard. And that's one thing that we really want to push this year because um, of course with COVID-19, you have seen how it has disrupted the supply chain. Uh, and it's always been focused on a global supply chain, us getting, you know, everything from different countries all over the United States. Uh, now we need to be able to scale back and focus on a, reg a more regional approach to the supply chain. So that's why we want to push and get more people involved in doing business with their state and local government agencies. And of course, those quasi government and anchor institutions as well. Uh, so, as I said, because they all have completely different processes in place, it is complex. You do have to figure out 
the process for every agencies, which is every agency, which is something that we are working on at GovLA. We have built a software platform that will allow a business to create one profile one time that they can use to do business with multiple government agencies. So the benefit of that is it increases the pool of small businesses that government agencies have the ability to work with. And um, it allows those agencies to maintain that decentralized status. So essentially, it's basically the SAM.gov uh, for state and local governments to be able to connect um, with businesses. So we'll take some examples from where you're located. So I want you to drop that in the chat. Let me know where you're located, uh, city and state, and we will go through. Also, tell me about your business. Let me know what you do. Uh, tell me about you as well, and drop that information in the chat, and we'll go through your some individual cities that we pull from uh, this conversation. So thank you so much to Charles, Shanika, and Alicia. I appreciate it. Got it. All right. So another thing I wanted to do on this session, I will be sharing my screen to show you how to navigate um, the process for this particular state or local government agency. So as you're dropping those in the chat, I will definitely be um, pulling that information up later on to share. But for state and local government agencies, they spend over $1.5 trillion on products and services annually. Uh, and that's $1.5 trillion. That's a lot of money for you to be able to make in your own backyard. Like literally uh, the departments the schools, the school, the school boards have a lot of money. Um, they have a lot of money. Well, at least around here, uh, our school boards have a lot of money at their disposal. I feel like most of the agencies have money at their disposal that they can utilize. Um, so we have uh, California. That's a good one. California does uh, really good with their processes as well. Uh, Lake Ensnore. We'll look at that. Um, and you are in financial services. That's another thing. It's a common misconception that government contracting only works for uh, individuals and contractors in the construction space. That is not true. Uh, it is very false. Uh, so financial services, uh, we have credit solutions, uh, as well as financial education. Uh, that could be something that can be done in multiple different facets. Riverside County, Riverside County, that's where that's located. Okay, so yeah, there's something that can be done in multiple different facets um, and multiple different areas of the government. I also see that you have life insurance. Uh, I just saw a contract of around here, I think maybe it was a month ago um, for a benefits provider um, and a benefits consultant as well. So that is definitely an opportunity. Charles has his hand up. Let's see. Charles, I see you have your hand up. Let me go ahead and do this for you. If you can hear me, drop it in the chat. I probably should have gave it a few minutes. People are coming in as we speak. Uh, but I definitely want to make sure I started on time today because I want to end on time. I have a habit of going over every time I'm doing a webinar or a training. Oh, Edward, I, I got to start checking the YouTube. We actually have someone on YouTube as well. Edward, he is in um, Brooklyn, New York. He's into e-commerce and office and medical supplies. So it's very exciting because I started my journey uh, working at a well, I started while I was serving active duty, selling supplies to the government. But um, as I transitioned from the military, I, my first um, part in this space was actually 
selling medical uh, and pharmaceutical supplies and equipment to the federal government. So that's definitely huge. Uh, that's a huge market. Uh, and it'll definitely be more available in the federal market. It'll be more available for you in the federal market. Uh, but like I said, at the state and local level, you do have the hospitals, you have the school systems, you have um, in, uh, institutions. A lot of them have programs, uh, medical programs. You have to think about that stuff as well. When you know, you're thinking about getting into the space, uh, okay, when you're thinking about getting into the space, think about not just you know the super, obvious areas to get into the space and think about ways to fit your company um, and position yourself into getting the, in, getting these opportunities. So uh, one of my friends, for example, she has a company, uh, she's DBE certified and uh, her company provides assistance with travel and lodging. So I know you're thinking most of those, well, and she works a lot with the Federal Highway Administration. So most of those contracts um, are usually construction based. They're usually um, repair work and, and things like that. So many of her opportunities, they come from working with prime contractors um, as a subcontractor on these jobs to help them find lodging and book their travel arrangements for the team, especially if they're flying here from out of uh, state or, you know, if they're just flying from a different county or city in this area. So that's one way. And I'm just saying, like, think about how you can position your business in this space that is not like blatantly obvious um, to where you can essentially carve out a space for your business like she has. Uh, and she was also very, um, she was very active in the process of finding um, additional space, additional space for individuals who actually had um, COVID-19 as well. And, you know, we had an issue, we were running with shortages of uh, space and hospitals and things like that. So she helped out with that. Uh, so that also brings me back to the state opportunities. Um, I said about the, the Florida, well, Department of Highway and um, Safety, but you also have the um, federal Aviation Administration, uh, which all of the different airports, think about the airports that you'd be able to work with, um, especially as it relates to different supplies, uh, different products, also services, janitorial services are huge. Those contracts to clean these airports have been insane. Um, so definitely janitorial as well, uh, but just really trying to find those niche areas and sticking to them. And I'll say that for any any different market. Um, so do we have anyone else who want to share about their business, their location, or their products? One other, oh, back to the state opportunity. So also thinking about the um, Department of Education, we have um, thinking about all the departments at the state level and figuring out how you can work with these organizations uh, or what value can your company provide? And that's the biggest question in this, um, making sure that you are always providing value. And at the state and local level, it's different. So for the federal space, you register in SAM, you uh, get your EIN and basically you're ready to do business with the government from there. But the state and local level, uh, you, like I said, everyone's processes are different. You have to figure out the processes for that particular organization and register with them usually. You register with them as a, as a business usually. That makes you available to bid on their contracts and their opportunities. So those two different, completely different processes. And one is definitely a lot more time consuming, but it is, um, it's more accessible as well because you are directly in the vicinity of where these opportunities are taking place. Uh, you have the ability to literally go to these locations uh, to uh, connect with the individuals you wanna show your product or any of that, you can do that stuff. Uh, you can't necessarily do that at the federal level unless you plan to fly to DC or any of the other locations where 
these uh, purchasing organizations are hosting. Uh, another thing about state and local government levels, we talk about the um, level of procurement in the federal space, uh, how you have the micro purchases that can be purchased with a government credit card, then you have the purchases that go out for bid. Um, and then you also have the purchases that um, are blanket purchases or they just purchases um, that, you know, yeah, blanket purchases. So purchases that they normally make. Um, and they also have the, the system, the uh, multiple award system. They have all of those same processes at the at the state and local government levels as well. So states usually have the multiple award system and any of the other processes in place that they will be able to take advantage of to purchase things in bulk. So not the counties and the cities don't have a multiple awards uh, schedule, but well, some do, but most of the states govern those multiple award schedules. So then also going into, as I said, those micro purchases, every organization has a completely different micro purchasing threshold. So for example, one city, their micro purchasing threshold to purchase with a government credit card um, could possibly be 3000. One could be 1500, some could be up to five. I haven't seen many go above that, but um, besides like the DOD, but, um, but from that, you'll be able to reach out to them, uh, become a part of their vendors list. I know things at the local, local levels are done like very traditionally, they have a list of vendors that they usually go, um, they usually connect with and they'll go after uh, based off of the work that they've done with them previously. So the first step with state and local government is just getting into that space. Because once you get into that space, it makes the process a, um, a lot simpler for you to continue to do work with this organization and you can leverage the background and the work that you've done previously. So we have a few notes. I'm gonna pause a few seconds. Um, okay, so Shanika said, are you uh, talking, well, are you talking about SAM.gov or what is the site? Okay, so no, so not for SAM.gov. SAM.gov is for federal government contracting. So for state and local government contracting, every state has, or every state and local government has a completely different process in place. So I'm gonna show you how to navigate uh, the, the websites. I'm gonna share my screen and show you how to navigate the websites in a minute. Um, and then we have to Tampa. Um, you're a nurse, but you're remodeling homes on the side. That is dope, that's pretty cool. Um, you would like to open up a pre-construction cleaning service. Absolutely, uh, pre and post constru construction cleaning services. Uh, those are always necessary, literally always. Uh, and being that you are you know, a woman, you would be able to go through the process of getting certified, um, making it more uh, of a opportunity for you to get into this space um, with benefits to those contractors. Um, then we have Fernando Beach. Okay, not far from Jacksonville, that's cool, which is Jacksonville is a really good area to do uh, some business in, huge city, um, lots of money, uh, huge city, lots of money, uh, lots of opportunities, uh, even in just that county, anyhow, uh, that county has a pretty good um track record of purchasing products and services. And then of course, there is also a military installation there as well. Uh, Charles, tell me about the services that your business provide. Let's see that. Got it, okay. Ooh, car washing. That's a good, um, another good opportunity. Think about the police departments, all those cars they have um, that need to be washed, need to be detailed. That's a huge opportunity uh, there as well. Uh, and then uh, Alicia also said a tire shop, another one. Um, you have all these transportation units. Uh, think about the parks and recreation, you know, um, health and sanitation, those those agencies, they have vehicles. They have vehicles that need car, I mean, that need tires. Uh, that's an opportunity for you to get into that space. So we have a few of them, not yet, but you're still full-time employee. Okay, 
Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, we have Broward County in the process of opening a home health care agency and short term rentals. Um, yeah, so that's another good one home health care, uh, especially in terms of like a partnership opportunity with organizations, you'll be able to leverage that. Um, I'm trying to think of a put. Yeah, so yeah, you'll be able to leverage that to work with. Think about Broward Health. Um, you'll be able to build some partnerships with some, some of the hospitals, like I said, that are a part of like a quasi government role. They get some funding from the government, even for hospitals and um, I think like nursing homes that are not like government run, you could do that stuff. Um, and then yes, of course, in New York, Brooklyn, but in New York, they, and New York is where they're also spending a lot of money as well. So we'll do, I'll go through that e-commerce focusing on medical and office supplies. That medical and office supplies will always, always hit. Let me pull my screen up. So the first one I'm gonna run through. This one is us speaking about um, navigating government websites before we pass on i want you to drop some questions in the chat let me know if you have some questions about any of the stuff that we have went over uh let me know if there's anything that you need some clarification on on this um she said, i welcome ideas for building this and other businesses and to locate in a positive area uh yeah for sure uh and if you want to schedule some time we could hop on a call um to do a, just a, a, a brief consultation, just to like help you narrow down a few things, um, iron out a few details. So I'm definitely available to doing that. Um, but yeah, so let me know if you have any questions based off of anything that we talked about um, in the last, what, 21 minutes. And um, then we'll hop into the process of navigating government websites. So you can get into these contracts. So one thing that I didn't bring up this time around, uh, which I, I, I really should just before we get into the navigating the websites, is the opportunity to get certified. So get your business certified. Now, I always issue this disclaimer. It's not mandatory for you to get certified as a business to do business with government agencies. It just provides you an additional marketing advantage when going after these contracting opportunities and it helps you tap into set aside opportunities. So for example, government agencies will have a set aside goal for DBEs, which is considered a disadvantaged business. And those businesses are usually 51% owned by women or uh, minorities, right? So once you go through that process of getting certified as a DBE, you can do business, well, even before that, you can still do business, but like I said, it gives you a marketing advantage. So uh, one that's like always huge in a DBE process is the, um, um, it's not coming out, uh, but basically like the highway, uh, oh, the Department of Transportation, there we go. So the Department of Transportation has a, a uh, entities at every state level and they all manage most of the DBE programs. Uh, sometimes they'll like sub it out to some of the counties to manage as well. But the certification process, once you go through the certification process, uh, you can tap into those contracting opportunities that are set aside. So what do I mean by set aside, right? If there's a contract that is up to, let's say, um, $7 million or $8 million on a project. And they'll say, hey, for this project and for the prime contractors, prime contractors are usually bigger contractors. So for this contract, you have a 9% goal, a 9% DBE goal. So of that $9 million, 9% .9 of that has to go to a, a certified DBE, a certified disadvantaged business. So that's why you wanna make sure that you are getting certified. It helps you tap into opportunities that you wouldn't normally be able to get if um, your business was not certified. So then, you know, that's where you build a relationships with these prime contractors um, that have previously won contracts before. Also becoming a part of the database so that way you can um, be on that list, that short list of companies that they do business with, that they work with, right? 
So that's about the certification. So since I don't have any questions, uh, any insight, well, actually, let me check the YouTube. I gotta remember to check that, y'all bear with me. Um, so any insights on vending machine contracts with prisons? So Carrie, today I'm actually talking about state and local government contracts. Um, we can go through some of the opportunities, but I will tell you that it is an opportunity to get contracts with prisons, with um, police departments. You can get them with any of the, the county, um, county offices. You can, you can get these um, vending machines in potentially any uh, actual location. So you can think about that. That's an opportunity. Uh, majority of the time, I haven't seen many of those I'll come back to that certification question. Uh, but I haven't seen many of the actual vending machine contracts. Those are usually contracts that you you have to go out and you know uh, share this information with them, let them know that you want to utilize their space for the vending machine. So we'll come back to that in another session, Carrie. So stick with us. And then you said um, we have, I don't know if I'm if I missed it, but what do you mean by getting certified, right? So certify, getting a certification, that's just basically certifying that your business is 51% or more owned by a woman, a minority, a veteran, or it's a local business, it's a small business. So they have certification pros, uh, processes and programs in place for you to be able to prove that you are that business. So it's not enough for me to have a business um, and say, hey, I'm 51% owner of this company as a woman, as a veteran, as a minority. I have to be able to prove it on paper as well. So that's why you have to go through an application process. And once that application is submitted, they'll go through a review process um, uh, based off of the documentation, you know, which is usually stuff like your um, tax returns, articles of incorporation, articles of or organization. Once they go through that stuff, that's how they'll be able to say, okay, your business is certified. We do believe that you are a minority owned business or a woman owned business. So yeah, that's how you get into it on that space. Does that help? Let me know if that helps out a little bit. No problem, Carrie. <laughs> I hope that helps. All right, so we are going to go into navigating the government websites now. And I'm gonna take some from the list of ones that we have, right? For people that are here, it makes no sense to do it for someone that no one's here. So, oh, let me go ahead and share my screen. So usually the process is, um, like I said, it's different and your best friend would be Google. Oh, let me pull that down. Your best friend would be Google. So you put this in. So you'll Google that particular area and you'll type in procurement. And sometimes if it's not procurement, you'll see purchasing, um, right? So there we go. Uh, if it's not procurement, you'll see purchasing. So those are the two names that traditionally these organizations would be considered, right? So you'll be able to go through here and figure out exactly what their particular process is. So as you can see, the city has a, um, a process to, for vendors. So we have here vendor information process. If you're interested in viewing your opportunities, you can click here, I'll pull it up in another tab. Hold on. Yeah, sometimes they have so many different links that navigate to multiple different sites. Um, it'll take a little bit, but it'll usually show you the opportunities that are available. Got it. Okay, cool. So here, um, and this is this is how you would register to become a vendor, right here. This process, and then to also just see the opportunities that they have av available. So they currently use a system called Planet Bids. Um, they always want you to download this 
like and install this flash player i never do i don't i don't like downloading all this stuff on my computer um but this is how you would be able to go in and, and take a look at these opportunities um by doing this and then to register as a vendor they also use the same system um but yeah so that is usually how you do it for this particular city why did it go to a different city website that's what my question is is this the same is it in the same area? Let me go to the chat. Let me check. Um, so this is a question about the cert back to the certification. Does it stop for those who okay, it couples a couple cities over. Okay. Um, but for the certification, does it stop for those who have felonies? And it really just depends on the stipulations of those programs. Um, from what I've seen, no. Um, but some of them do have, you know, that verbiage in there. So you would have to look at that. Regardless of what I always would, you know, if it's not in the paperwork, if it's not in writing, bid on, I mean, not a bid on it. If it's not in the writing, apply for the certification and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, apply for the certification and then just go from there based on off of what they say. Orange County. Okay, so let's try Riverside County instead. It's in the wrong map. So yeah, navigating these sites, um, usually procurement, usually purchasing, uh, we, sometimes when you just go to the website, they, yep, I was going to say, all, always usually have a tab for businesses. And you can see information uh, right here. You want to go to where it says doing business in Riverside County, right? So this will show you the process, well, multiple different things. But here you'll see business with the county and purchasing. We'll click there. And also, let me know if I'm, I'm, I'm going through this too fast. Sometimes I do that. Uh, so just say, slow down. Please slow down. Let me know. Um, but yeah, so this one is here. You, they have it actually lined out to where you can see their open bids on their actual website. They don't have any open bids right now. Let's see. Oh, I lied. They do. They do nine days remaining yep so they use public purchase as their system to see their open bid so you can see what a call center dashboard service um dna identification system some remote control bomb robot what y'all got going on over there um some cad software migration what is this? Quality early care and education for infants and toddlers. That's a good, uh, good one in the education space. Fixed route transportation services. Yep. So as, as you can see, they have it lined out here. This is really just embedded from this is embedded from an, another site. And if you want to see it on that different site, you can see it here. Uh, this is actually one of the few sites that I actually like um, because they have all of the information outlined here. And you can see it all up front without having to go through the process of creating an account. Um, because by the time you go through this, you'll have accounts cre created for like 12 different systems. So we'll do that. All right. In another session, I'll go over uh, bidding on the contract. But actually, let me cl click on it so I can show you. Yeah, they do want you to log in. Nope, never mind. I'm not going to log into that one because I'll do that in another session about how to um, how to read these solicitations and how to respond to a proposal. Uh, that's going to be a different session. So I don't want to go too deep in the weeds with this before we actually key. Let me go back. So we have another location to pop in. I'm sure Tampa was one. Uh, which, so you wanna also know, would the process be the same for school districts? And the answer is yes. Um, let's just go ahead and do that. Riverside County. Yeah, so Riverside County School District. Now, some of them, Oh, it's like hella school districts in here. 
uh, some of them actually have it to where there's one governing body who purchases on behalf of everyone. Um, but most of the districts have their own processes in place. This is going to be one of those sites because Okay, here we go. This is where y'all are. Click on this one. So here we have, let me move my little head. Okay. Over here in the department space. And like I said, it's usually always procurement or purchasing. And here we are purchasing. The language is usually the same across the board with that. The only thing that changes up is the, the departments who manage the certifications from multiple different uh, areas. So here you are. Um, and another good thing about this is you can reach out directly to these uh, procurement managers, the business officers. You can just send them an email, give them a call. It's easy touch points, reach out to them. Um, don't be afraid to contact them. If you need some clarification, if you need some help with something, uh, they'll, they'll be there to you know, support you through this process as well. Um, but let's figure out how to get to their things. Yeah, so this could possibly be one of the systems to where it's managed by another body because I don't see any information about their current opportunities. Let me go back. Yeah, I don't see anything on there. Uh, this will be one that it will probably take a little bit to go through, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but um, play with it. And like I said, give these people a call. You are right here. You are right in the same area. It's easy touch points to reach out and connect with these individuals. So we'll hop into another one. Like I said, I know the city of Tampa was on the list. Uh -oh, we have a question. Let's check the question. I don't want to get too far without answering the question. Oh, no problem, love. Um, City of Tampa. Okay, here we go, purchasing department. So you may not know this, but I'm originally from St. Pete, St. Petersburg. So I know a little bit about Tampa. Do you have this? Um, so I know a little bit about Tampa, um, but I wanna talk to you about this process as well. Let me answer this really quick question. Do you have to have, uh, do you sometimes have to have money up front for some projects? I've had this occur with a contract for a school. Yes, um, and especially if like, say for example, you doing business with a school, you wanna sell them 30,000 pencils. Uh, you say, hey, I can get you these pencils, but, you don't have the money for that contract up front. They're not gonna give you the money up front. They want you to provide them with a the product and they pay you the money afterwards. So uh, for some projects, yes, you will, unless it's a service, right? So if the service was for you to come in and clean all the whiteboards in the school, that's a service. So uh, of course you don't have to have the capital up front to do that uh, unless you wanted to bring people on and pay them, uh, but you can still get this job done without having that capital, capital up front. So there are um, companies that do provide loans on um, purchase orders with government agencies. Uh, I know a few of them. I haven't been able to successfully build a network of them, which is something, let me write it down so I can make sure I work on that. Uh, but successfully build a network around that who can provide access to capital. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, so yeah, now let's hop into this City of Tampa website. So like I said, it's always purchasing or procurement. Um, again, here you see the information is right in front of you. Oh, another good thing about it is they also have um, the outlines of what those purchasing requirements are. 
in those purchasing thresholds. Let's see what this. Let's see if this is their schedule. Oh no. Okay, so they use bid. I mean, Demand Star to advertise their solicitations. And I've actually had a conversation with the man star uh, about connecting further. Um, but yeah, so they advertise their solicitations on demand star. Let me go back. I hate this little banner. And so here you'll be able to see, wow, this is a nice upgrade. I had no idea they did this. Um, but you can see their current open and active solicitation. So here, uh, solid waste management system. What else? Oh, marketing and media relations services for Ebor City. I've been there. I've been there before, y'all. I was underage, but I was there. Um, background investigative, uh, investigation services, doing background checks. There we go. Some, some money to do that. Carpet cleaning. We had that. What is this? Street walk, bike path or something that we have to craft. Hopefully they'll let you see it without signing in. Let's see. Yes, they do. Um, but okay, so with Demand Star, you do have to download the packages. Uh, you get one location for free. So let me admit some people. So with Demand Star, you can actually download the packages, but you get one location for free. Uh, to be able to download like the entire bid package. So I can download the package, but we can look at the brief like scope of work. And this is just maintenance of traffic roadways, signing, um, pavement markings, uh, signalization, utilization of adjustments slash relocations and all associated work required for the complete project in accordance with the contract documents. So really is repaving the roads, um, fixing the signs and markings. So this is a, you know, an opportunity. This is a invitation to bid for the street path by, well, street walk bike path opportunity. And also you can see here, it's a FDOT project, which is also usually very good because you know they got the money for that. Uh, that's another thing. Sometimes they'll put out opportunities without having the capital for the project up front, uh, but they're just doing it to figure out how much uh, it's going to cost basically. And that'll usually be like a request for quote. They're just requesting quotes to process um, to figure out how much it's going to cost. So we had the employee benefits. Uh, we talked about that a little bit earlier. We had someone who's doing uh, insurance and employee benefits. So yeah, so this is the city of Tampa's process of navigating their system navigating their process. And usually you'll, once you create that account with Demandstar, you'll be able to see, uh, download those packages. If you download it to, I mean, you'll be able to download those packages. Uh, I'm gonna hop into their supplier registration process. So they use this system called iSupplier, uh, which is actually owned by Oracle, Oracle Enterprises. So they, you know, they got a contract with the city to be able to provide this software, which is what we'll be doing as well. Um, so provide this software to help register vendors. And that's what we will be doing as well. So you'll come in here and you'll create an account um, to, yeah, you'll come in here and you'll create an account. And now you'll be a part of their vendor registration. Um, yeah, uh, their, vendor their vendor system. So you'll be able to do business uh, with their organizations. And when they go to check for vendors for different opportunities, they usually source through their existing list of suppliers first, and then they'll basically push it out, uh, especially if it doesn't require them to do a public uh, solicitation. Because there are sometimes opportunities uh, that they can just get three quotes for, and that's it. And they can award the contract based off of that. And that's pretty much where you um, you want to be on those supplier lists so you can have access to those opportunities. So I'm going to find another city or, or county. But in the meantime, please drop some um, questions in there based off of the stuff we just went over. I do not want to bypass uh, anything to make sure that everyone's getting, you know, access to get all the questions they have out. I have another city and I'm pretty sure it's Brooklyn. Yep, it's Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I do have a question. 
Broward County. Oh, I'm gonna get to Broward. You know, I'm, I'm gonna leave Broward to the end. We in the same area, <laughs> but I'm gonna get to Broward. So Brooklyn, what else was it? Oh, Fernando Beach. Grab that. Okay, so boom. Brooklyn, oh, this is the Navy Yard. I want to go to the Navy Yard. Right here, no, this is for the state of New York. Brooklyn, there you go. Let me just open that one anyhow. That one's pretty cool. Uh, Brooklyn College, remember we talked about colleges? Right here. Let me move this. We talked about colleges. What is the county? What county is Brooklyn? Is it in Kings County? Let's see. And if you can't find it with the um, procurement or the purchasing, just go to the city of Brooklyn, New York. Oh, okay. Let's do this. Maybe it is on the NYC website. Got it, I figured it was, okay, let's do that. Kings County might be better. I hate that uh, NYC website is. Got it, okay, here we go. Okay, cool. We got some people popping out. Here we go. So welcome to Kings County Purchasing. What? Okay, so here's their vendor registration process. Let me move my head. Let's see what's this. Okay, they have their own system. But this is, like I said, where you register to become a vendor. Register to become a, vend become a vendor um, to be a part of their database. They have a paper application process. Thank you for this, because I'm gonna reach out to them uh, to talk to them more about um, digitizing this process. So working with them, thank you, Edward. Look at you out here helping the system. Um, so yeah, so that's their registration process and then their request for quotes and bids uh, and proposals. So they have a list here where you can actually go in, take a look at it, you see the Oh, they have two trailers, um, single axle. They have 110 or 12 passenger vans. Um, so, oh, these are closed, sorry. Don't, don't look at those, it's closed. It clearly says closed. Uh, so yeah, here we go. The County of King Sheriff's Operation Building Site Specifications. Uh, so they really only have two opportunities available right now. And it kind of looks like a duplicate. Nope, it's two completely different bid numbers. So two projects. Um, but yeah, so let's see if you can click on it and see more. You can, and you can actually download the documentation to review the solicitation. Like I said, it's another day, another another uh, conversation. I'll close that out. Um, we'll go through Fernando Beach bids and purchasing. Got it. So. Another process um, right here, they show you their current bids. I'll open in another tab. Uh, they have a vendor applicant, another one. Thank, thank y'all. I'm about to reach out to them as well. Fernanda Beach. And, okay, so another one, I'll add, keep that one up. Is still buffering, so give it a second. Here we go. So they have their opportunities on their county, or I mean, on the city's website. So you'll see uh, they have the parks and recreation. They have an opportunity for a MLK pool deck and a breezeway resurfacing. Uh, that opportunity closes on the fifteenth, and then an on call. Ooh, arborist services. What's going on there? 
Got it. So you can see those opportunities on the city's website. Um, this system, I like this system because it allows you to uh, sign up to receive notifications when opportunities come available. So anytime they have any new bids um, come out, they'll send you an email or either a text message to let you know uh, when these opportunities are available. So this is a really good system uh, to sign up for, especially if you are in this vicinity, in this area. Like I said, you can tap into these opportunities. Uh, I'll click on it just to see if it'll give us a better explanation. Yep, so here we are, we have the description. Um, yeah, we have the description of the project, give you a little bit better input into what they are looking for. And then of course, they still have the document for you to download here. So once you actually um, go through this process, once you actually download the solicitations, you'll be able to go through and create the proposal based off of uh, what they are re requiring and what you can provide. So we'll go through, like I said, that on another day. Um, and then we're gonna get to Broward County. So Broward County, they use a system called um, Bid Sync for their opportunities. I have a, a question in the chat. Let me check it real quick. Can you bid for products slash services outside of your area? Yes, you can. Uh, you can always do it outside of your area. Uh, the reason that I brought up doing more opportunities in the area that you're located in is because of the issue with um, the supply chain right now being, you know, that the coronavirus has, you know, restricted a lot of opportunities in terms of supply chain. So it gives you more leverage to do business in your local area because you can bid on these opportunities and you can provide that service or those products sometimes same day. Um, so yeah, it gives you it gives you the opportunity to do those things right in your own backyard. Um, so here we go, business with Broward County. So um, Broward County's website is very nice. Uh, they have literally all the information you need, uh, which can be good for you. It can also be bad for you as well because it can be um, confusing sometimes to go through. But going to go, oh, well here at the top, it says current solicitations and um, results. So this shows you, they don't have any open bids right now unless, yeah, they don't have any open bids at this moment, but you can see, uh, like I said, they use a system called BidSync. They have multiple different opportunities from transportation, uh, supply, supplying of ceiling tile, uh, conflict adjustment services. What is it? A business consulting services for Young at Art of Broward. So you can see they have like opportunities from in multiple different spaces, multiple different areas. Um, and let's see if they'll let us see it. Yes, they will. Good. Uh, we probably won't be able to dive into, yeah, into the requirements, but you can see um, some of the stuff that they're requesting. So I also like uh, BidSync because it allows you to, uh, sometimes you don't have to do a full proposal, it allows you to just submit quotes within the system, right? So right here, you see where it has line item um, for the landfill compactor, you will be able to just put in the price for it and submit that quote based off of that. So I love um, I love this system. It's kind of like a, a reverse auction style component to what they have, but they also allow you to uh, upload full proposal packages as well. So that is uh, the process. So I'm gonna show you just because I'm on Broward County, their certification process, or uh, yeah, they're about their certification. So we talked a little bit about certifications. So um, I said earlier that they have certifications for um, minorities, women-owned businesses, and state and local businesses. So, well, yeah, uh, for local businesses. So some programs will be uh, race and gender neutral and some will not. So what allows an agency to have a race and gender neutral, I mean, a race and gender conscious program is they will go through what we call a disparity study. 
And through this disparity study, it has to prove that a number of certain percentage of contracts are not going to minority-owned, women-owned, um, or minority-owned or women-owned businesses. And that, with the results of that disparity study, the county, well, the commission, the community, they can advocate to have a race and gender-based program. Otherwise, they cannot. So Broward County does not have a race and gender conscious program. It's a neutral program. Um, and it's mostly because they were sued like a while, a, a, a while ago for, I have no idea how many years it was. Um, they got sued for it, but um, there we go. Yeah, but they do have a certification program that is for small businesses. So let me know if you need some clarification on that. Um, if I explained it to, to uh, yeah, if I explained it well enough for everyone to understand. So it's Office of Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Got it. So Broward County has to who the man, the department that manages their certification process is the Office of Economic and Small Business Development. Other cities and counties may have um, Department of Civil Rights. Uh, some may have Department of Inclusion and Diversity. Some may have um, Economic Development, Department of Economic Development. So it's multiple different departments who would manage this. Sometimes purchasing also um, will manage the process of certifications, but usually they really need a department that is focused directly on that uh, because they also have compliance um, and reporting requirements that they have to go through through that stuff as well. So we have like four more minutes. So I'm gonna show you, nope, this is the advisory board. Let's go back. Got it, okay. So here it says get certified, right? So like I said, they have local certification programs, but Broward County also manages the DBE and ACDBE. So uh, the, the ACDBE is the airport concessions disadvantaged business. So that just allows you to be a disadvantaged business in the airport arena, right? Uh, but here, if we click on it, you can see they have a county business and a small business certification process. And here it shows you uh, about how the process worked for the certifications. And if you fit into the value, I mean, if you fit into the program of their certification. So uh, you, your personal net worth has to be uh, below 1.3 million. The firm must be independent. That means you can't be owned by another entity. Um, wait, owned or operated by an outside entity with um, di with different influence, basically. Let's throw that, let me fix that. Uh, you have to have your business tax receipts, and which is also known as your occupational license in some places. And then the business must, and you must be in business for at least a year prior to submitting your application. Uh, this also, they have a site visit. So after you submit your application, they go through the process, hey, we'll come by and expect your, um, your location. Um, this also does not exclude home-based businesses. You just have to make sure that you have a location that is set up directly for your business um, within your home. So it doesn't exclude businesses that are home-based businesses. And then, they, of course, they also have a paper application, uh, which I am looking to work with them to convert it to an actual application, a digital application in our platform. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna ask a few questions. Actually, before I do that, I wanna show you guys something. Um, I wanna show you something on our website, what our platform, where we are uh, currently with the software. So like I said, in the platform earlier, your, a business will be able to create one profile, one time to do business with multiple government agencies. So once you create a profile in our platform, in our app, in our web app, um, 
this is what the profile will look like. And it'll have all of the basic information on there. It's basically a digital capability statement. And it'll show you uh, all contact information, the products and services that your business provides, uh, what type of contractor are you? Are you a prime or sub or both? Uh, the socioeconomic status, woman-owned, veteran-owned, minority-owned, economically disadvantaged. Um, and then it also shows, do you accept government credit cards? This, like I said, it allows you to tap into those micro purchases uh, that can be made with a government credit card. And then the next codes for your business, any certifications and the past performance that you have. So any contracts or any opportunities that you have done before. So this profile becomes visible to government agencies for them to locate you and your business for different opportunities uh, to do business and sell, well, yeah, to do business and sell your products and services to them. So um, yeah, and the, so the good thing about it is because all of this information along with some attached documents is in your profile for those certifications that we digitize once you actually go to that certification to apply because all the information is there it'll uh, automatically populate into the form uh, making it 10 times easier for you to go through these certification and registration processes uh, so that's one thing that we are working on this year and trying to tap into getting more state and local government agencies on board utilizing our software uh, so that's the last thing I want to show you. I was pretty excited. Uh, it took almost two years to really get this like from an idea in my head to the actual software. Uh, and my team has been really working hard on it. So super excited to share it with you. I will be sharing more information about how you can go and create a account on our platform, which I would love to have uh, all of you doing that. But uh, just one final two or three more minutes, it's already seven o'clock, but uh, drop any additional questions that you may have in the chat. Uh, you can always reach out to me on uh, social media. Um, I took a break, was on a hiatus, but I'm back now um, and you know, ready to get the work done. So uh, shoot me an email. If you have my number, text me. Um, yeah, so I'm available for any questions. And if you have any questions, drop them now. Also, let me know any suggestions for some topics that you would like to be covered in the next few, uh, in the coming weeks for, like I said, free game Friday. So let me know. No more questions? I'm trying to give y'all a minute because I know I talk fast. So I'm calling it. Thank y'all for uh, stopping in. Uh, I will talk to everyone soon. Oh, someone is just showing up. The party is over. The party is over. All right. Well, y'all have a good one. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. And I look forward to talking to everyone soon. Have a good one. Bye.